Hello everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and um, this is part two of how to test your IMD performance at home using very cheap tools. Now, off in the background here, and I'll just uh, introduce it, so excuse my arms, we've got our SDR Play RSP2, um, as we covered in part one of the video. That's the main brains behind this operation. And um, everything's been hooked up now. You can see there's a mess of cables and uh, I spent quite a bit of time getting this all set up. So, firstly I'd like to cover some of the settings that you want to get right um, on your SDR Play if you're going to use it as a spectrum analyzer. Now, the SDR Play has about somewhere between 60 to 70 decibels of dynamic range which is more than enough when you're trying to um, test the IMD of a receiver that's got uh, a quoted spec of somewhere between negative 30 and negative um, 40 um, dBc dynamic range. So that's most 12 volt transceivers, most battery powered transceivers, and even most solid state amplifiers. Um, the only time this sort of equipment wouldn't be uh, any good for measuring IMD is if you were doing something like using um, a Class A capable Yaesu radio like the 1000 uh, MP Mark V 200 watt version or the uh, FT2000 200 watt version or any, basically any of the 50 volt radios that can be running Class A at 75 watts. Now if you were to use one of those you can expect to get IMD performance around negative 75 which this setup couldn't measure. Um, that said, if you were driving one of those into a linear amplifier, such as um, a, a tetrode amplifier, uh, this would still be uh, more than capable because the tetrode amplifier would be the limiting factor. If you're driving a solid state amplifier, um, you'd be having exactly the same problem. The only time this wouldn't be suitable would be, say, if you were potentially driving something like a dual 3CX800 A7 amplifier or a 3CX800. Um, 1500 A7 amplifier, so some of the really super clean MRI grade um, triode amplifiers. Anyway, without much further ado, I'll get to getting the settings right on your SDR play. Now this is crucially important because we need to make the most of our 60 decibels of dynamic range. And if we don't get the settings right, we won't be able to do that. So there's a few settings you've got to go and uh, uh, set. Firstly, you probably want to have I'll see if you can use my mouse here, but your RF gain setting right here down to um, as low as it can go, which is, uh, it tells you just here, mine's set to 1.3. Um, I'll just show you what happens when you move it. Oops, I'll try to anyway. It goes up and down. You'll see gain 25. There's no attenuator on an RSP, so you want to have that as low as possible. Second thing you want to do is you want to right click on your settings. Uh, sorry, I'll close this. You want to click on your settings here and bring up your main settings window. And that's just gone and thrown away all of my settings. So that's very annoying, but it will just let me, allow me to demonstrate something. You want to turn off, sorry for my hand. Excuse me a second. You want to turn off IFAGC. You want to turn off AGC in your receiver and you want to mute your receiver. Now, when I do this, because it lost my settings, you'll see it saying ADC overloaded here. So that's telling you it's not going to give you an accurate result. What you want to do is set your IF AGC, now that you're setting it manually, to the, to the point that you don't get ADC, over, ADC overload. But you don't want to stop there. You actually want to go as low as you possibly can. Now the way to do this, is I've got the radio in FM mode putting out its, its maximum power and without we're receiving but we're not transmitting and our noise floor is around um, 110. So when we transmit our noise floor is going up to about 100, just slightly under 100 and we see it drop slightly there, probably another 5 decibels. So what we want to do is then just go and adjust this slightly down and we'll test it again okay that uh, that's actually too low now because our transmitting noise floor 
and our non-transmitting noise floor, I oh know that's probably about right. What you want to achieve is for your transmitting noise floor to, to only slightly be higher than your non-transmitting noise floor. And the reason you want to do that is you don't want to be throwing away part of your dynamic range. So I've just gone in and adjusted it. Now it's at 25. Please bear in mind these settings are only suitable for the device under test that you're using at the time. It all depends on how much attenuation you've got on your sampler, et cetera, et cetera, how much drive power is coming out of the radio. Let's just test one more time. Just under 100, we'll say, oh, I've got a silly touchscreen computer. Forgot about that. Sorry, guys. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, what have we got? We're sitting at about, let's just say, negative 103. When we transmit, we get to exactly negative 100. So that's good. We're not overloading our ADC. We've got our gain settings right in both places. And we've got only about 3 dB difference between no transmissions at all and the baseline um, non-transmitted area, the spurious sort of rubbish that we're getting out of the radio. And that's at just about negative 100, whereas without the radio transmitting, we're at negative 103. That's perfect. Now, the other settings you want to change, your sample rate here, you want to have that set as low as you can. So if we click that, I'll set mine to two. It's gone and redone a few settings I didn't want it to, but that's okay. And when you do set that, you then have to you then find that you have to go and zoom. Now with the SDR play, there's always a spike where you when you first enable it, where you're tuned to. So you want to avoid that. Just say you start the radio on um, 14189. Um, there'll always be that little spike there. You want to say, if you're going to measure on, we'll just stop it for now, I can demonstrate. If you're going to measure on uh, 14200, like we are, uh, you want to start your radio somewhere. Uh, this, this computer's not my favourite, but uh, that's okay. Um, you want to start your radio at somewhere like 14... Uh, it's not going to let me do it. That's okay. Anyway, we'll start it at 14189. Hit play. And you'll see that little spike there. That's all right. What we do then is we just go up to 14200 where we're going to measure and we zoom in as much as we can. Uh, let's have a look. Come on, let me zoom in. Uh, that seems to be about as much as I can zoom in. So. Uh, not happy with that spike being there. I'll stop that. I'll change that to say five, uh, 14, one, uh, let's have a look, one, seven, zero. Let's try this. Hit play. And see, did I actually do it or not? I'm not sure now. I had this all set up nicely too, but uh, that's what happens when you're doing tests. You've got to make sure you always get these things right. Oh, it's gone and changed a few other things. Okay, all right, let's change that back. So going back to what I was saying, you want your sample rate to be as low as possible, so two megahertz, and you want your decimation to be as high as possible, um, which is eight. So in that case, our final sample rate is only 2500 or 250 kilohertz, which is what we want because we want to be devote the, the smaller your sample rate here is, the better um, your the more bits you're capturing. So, in this case, by setting it to two with a decimation of eight, we've got a 14 bit ADC that gives us the highest dynamic range. So, let's see if I can get this zoomed in nicely like I want. There we go. The reason it wasn't zooming before is because I didn't have the decimation set. So we'll scroll up to 14200 and there we go. We can see our FM carrier. We'll get it nice in the middle. The one thing I do want to say is pay no attention to this particular S meter. 
it tends to sometimes completely overread because of all the gain settings and that you've uh, minimised, just like some radios automatically push their S meter up as you uh, turn down the RF gain. Same thing can sort of happen on this radio on occasion. So don't worry about what that says. The most important thing is getting your spectrum scope um, to look like it should. Basically, you want it to look what you'd expect a two-tone test to look like. Now, the other thing you probably want to do is go to setting. Uh, I've just changed my answer. It doesn't matter. Is you go to settings here, and you can change your range, which is that range there, using this setting. But most importantly, you want to set your FFT averaging to something like 16. This makes it a lot easier to see um, the two tones. Basically, instead of just showing little spikes that are little transients, it gives you the average. So it's an average of 16 samples rather than one sample. It makes it a lot easier to, um, to do the measurements. So without much further ado, let's get started. The second thing, after we've got all that set up, we need to go to the program Audacity. Now I've loaded up my IMD two-tone test file that I generated. It's available on my, um, uh, what was it called? I'll have a quick look here. Um, my IC7610 two-tone and white noise video. There's a link to the Dropbox here um, with the files on it. I'll give you a link in this video as well. So what I've done is I've just got that looping in the background and the way you do that is to hold down shift and click play. So you open the file, hold down shift, hit play, and there you go. That one is actually driving pretty hard there. So let's see what we can do. I might reduce the output just a little bit. Um, what's going on there? This was generated on a different computer, so I'm not entirely happy with that. So I'll just go and generate another one. And I'll show you how you do it. You go File, New. No, you don't, sorry. You go File, uh, Edit, where is it? Uh, I want to add another track, sorry, track, Add New. Much rather a mouse. Mono track, and then you go generate tone, and you want a sine wave, you want 700, and you also want your amplitude, to, this is um, between one and zero, to be something like 0 0.4, because bear in mind they're going to sum, and you're gonna get 0 0.8 in your final thing. Now we're gonna want 30 seconds is fine, we'll go and generate that, and as you can see, that single tone isn't going to, isn't maxing out, um, uh, you know, isn't going to one, which is the maximum the um, digital to analog converter is going to put out. So we'll generate another tone. This time we'll chuck it at 1900. And let's see, well, did it do that or not? I'm not sure it did that now. Um, edit, undo tone. Uh, tracks, add new. Tracks, add new, mono track. Generate tone. And I'll silence, sorry. I'll click here. Go back to the start, of course. Uh, these things can be quite fiddly at times, but measuring anything is always fiddly. Ah, tracks, add new, more track. Hence why I produce the um, pre-made uh, tones for you. Generate tone, 1400, 0.4. There, I've got that. Okay, now we know we've got our two, two tracks there and we can hold down shift and hit play. And it's going to play them both simultaneously. And the way to know that you've actually got two tone, oh, it hasn't played it at all. Um, shift play. There we go. Uh, ah. I've gone and selected a tiniest little bit. Um, shift play. There we go. Now our two tones are playing. As you can see there, because we went to zero, uh, 
0 0.4 on both, we're about 3 dB below the out maximum output of our sound card. So um, that's something to be wary of. On my normal test computer, the file that I had generated was there, but on this computer, it's decided it wouldn't be. Anyway, we've got that looping in the background. Background, there's our two, our two tones. I've got our radio receiver running, and what we'll do now, we'll change our radio to be um, on uh, digital mode. Now, I'm not using keying, because obviously I'm not using a ham radio program, but I am feeding the output of Audacity straight into this little Yaesu SCU17 sound card. So, let's verify that we are indeed getting a two-tone test. So, if we take off, if we put the meter into average mode, this is on digital, the radio has been set up to be digital USB, and we'll start transmitting. All right, we can see two tones there. Now the parameter is hardly moved. We chuck it onto PEP, still hardly moved. Let's turn the power up just a little bit. Okay, so bear in mind, a normal pan grade power meter, even a nice one, uh, within the you know, $150 to $200 range, is only 10% accurate at full scale. So I've got this set to 30 watt scale, and it's saying a watt there, but I'm reasonably convinced that it's not very accurate. Now, when I say 10% at full scale, it means it could be 10%, you know, at 30 watts, it could be plus or minus three watts. When you get down to say the one watt level, all bets are off. It could be 20% uh, uh, inaccurate. So it's just one thing to be mindful of. Hand grab power meters, they're great for seeing the change in power. So we'll just put that back into non-peak holding. So they're great for seeing the change in power. They're awesome for tuning up a linear amplifier. But uh, when it comes to actually measuring the power output, they're not particularly accurate. They're good enough for what we need to do. As I said, they can show you the change in level, but they won't ever give you a completely, a, um, completely accurate level. If you want to do that, the best way to do that is to say use a spectrum analog, uh, sorry, not a spectrum analog, an oscilloscope um, with a diode across your dummy load, and you just sample that, and then you measure the peak to peak voltages, and you can calculate your actual power output because you know your load is 50 ohms. Um, the other thing you can do is you can invest in something like an LPA 100A, uh, which is quite a high end digital um, power meter, and uh, I believe the the um, builder of those uh, calibrates them using a, um, an instrument which has been NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, Cal I believe that's right, uh, NIST is American, not Australian, um, calibrated instrument. So yeah, if you want to know your exact power, you have to pay a lot, but when it comes to just tuning up amplifiers and seeing the rate of change peaking your output, hand grade meters are fine. And that's why I get a, a bit annoyed when people say, oh, the SDR play can't possibly be useful for testing IMD because it's not, uh, it's not a, a $50,000 Tektronix uh, spectrum analyzer. Well, if you actually read the specs, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, the $1,000 uh, you know, Regal entry-level scopes, their dynamic range is only about 60 decibels too. <laughs> so, um, you know, it might seem counterintuitive that a, a $200 SDR play can do the same job, but you've got to remember it's only $200 because it doesn't come with a computer. And so what you're paying for in your $1,000 spectrum analyzer is the computer. So anyway, enough of my rants, let's get, let's get down to business. So, we'll put this back into PEP mode. Now in PEP it does take a little while for it to drop off. So I normally reset it like that, with this particular meter, and we'll bring it up very slowly to more or less a watt. So if we look at our screen here, that's our 700 hertz tone, that's our 1900 hertz tone, that's IMD3, that's the other IMD3, IMD5, IMD5, IMD7, IMD7, and I've got a phone ringing now, so I'll just pause the video briefly. <laughs> 